So, so Marcus Brownlee got criticism for saying that a product that he reviewed was bad. Imagine that. All right. I review a lot of products, right? I've, I've talked about hundreds, maybe thousands of products at this point. But as many videos as I've made about products, there are way more products out there in the world that exist. So the process of selecting which products to even review in the first place is like an art form to itself. Most products are yeah, just sure. meh. They're fine. Like they exist, they, they get made, they're fine, whatever. So they have to they have to reach a certain level of interest or or being really good to even be considered for a review or sometimes really really bad so there's been a lot of yeah. interesting discourse lately on this topic there will well, to keep in mind that what the discourse is about there were a couple of morons that didn't like the fact that a guy that has a youtube channel like can say that something is bad and it will negatively affect the company that's basically the, what you know, it was some negative reviews and then a company will eventually go out of business and then the internet poses the question do bad reviews kill companies? Do yes. Bad reviews kill companies? Yes. Or do bad products kill companies? Bad products create bad reviews that kill the company because of the bad products. I think bad reviews do absolutely kill products too. Both, yeah. That's the way it is. I... Yeah, I, I do have a lot of thoughts. So two of the biggest examples that have been pointed to, especially on Twitter, were the Fisker Ocean Review that I did and the Humane AI pin mm. from a couple days ago. So the Fisker saga was pretty well documented, but in case you missed it, I reviewed a car, I had a pretty horrible experience with it, documented it, published their review on the Autofocus channel, and then a few months later, the entire company appears to be on life support, like likely filing for bankruptcy soon and now this startup has it ever has it ever occurred to the people that were criticizing him that maybe the reason why it went out of review or went out of business is because other people had that same experience like i don't know i feel like that's like that's the logical expect like it's a coincidence yeah it's like oh, so i bought this product and it was really bad and then the company went out of business well well wouldn't that be because everybody else that bought the product probably also thought it was bad you know, they yeah, this reminds me of whenever people blame Josh Strife Hayes for killing Terra or for killing New World. Their first product, this pin, I review it. It's not super positive. A lot of people are saying the same thing. Yeah. And I don't even think Humane is going anywhere, by the way. But I think there is some pretty simple logic we can use to decipher what the, the real danger is to these companies, which is, do you still get a bunch of negative reviews and then die as a company? if the product is actually really good. But you know, let's back up for a second. What is a review? A little pet peeve of mine is I think people misuse or overuse that word a lot, but a review is just somebody uses a product and then just delivers their impressions on whether they think it's any good or not, how well it actually worked. And if their honest opinion is if it's good, then that's the review. If it's bad, that's the review. That's basically it. That's crazy. And so I've been an advocate of good independent reviews for what feels like forever now but the thing about it's super important and it's becoming more important now because like a lot of review sites and you saw this with like things like gamergate 10 years ago and it's like it's obviously still true is that a lot of people get compromised and you have people that are like giving shill reviews all the time and it's becoming more and more important that the the people that are doing reviews are doing it in service of the customer because I feel like more and more what's ended up happening is that reviews have become in service of the company that's providing the product or in service of companies in general rather than in service of the customer. And I find that to just be such a horrible fucking change. Reviews is if they're not honest, then they're basically useless. Yeah, exactly. I really strongly feel like everything that comes from a review, all the consequences and everything that comes around it, everything in the world of an ecosystem of reviews depends on the review being truthful and actually honest about things. So yeah. let me, I'll just give an example. I've told this story before, but years ago, I remember I reviewed the first uh, Razer phone when it came out. So Razer, 
-hmm. gaming company. They make lots of stuff. They're getting into smartphones for the first time, so they made a phone that appeals to the you same... You guys remember the Motorola Razor? ...target demographic of gamers. So, you know, it had yeah. a bunch of upsides and downsides. Obviously, gaming-focused features, so it's got, like, front-facing classic, speakers yeah. and a high refresh rate. The battery mm -hmm. is pretty big, but also the camera was weak. And I specifically, sure. I remember, I, the vibration motor was horrible. And I remember calling Ooh. it out. I remember saying this. Also, the vibration motor in this phone, trash. Straight trash. I'm going to call myself so you can hear this. Jesus. Like, that's the kind of sound it's like, it, that's like whenever your controller makes that sound, it's time to get a new controller. You know, that's like you get a Mad Cats controller that's used, and then, like, you let your little brother use it for, like, two weeks, and then it comes back and it makes that fucking sound. It sounds broken, like it's, but it sounded that way out the box yeah. since day one. So that is the Razer phone. Just one of the worst vibration motors I've ever experienced in a new phone. So, okay, fast forward a year, right? Mm -hmm. I'm at a briefing. It's in New York City. It's for the Razer phone 2. And so they're walking me and some other people through this new phone they've made, and they've got a bunch of changes. It's got a glossy back. Yeah. They added wireless charging now. The logo glows, and, like, the speakers are better and That's all this crazy. stuff. That's crazy. And they're talking us through it. And then the guy turns to me and he says, and Marquez, you got to try the new vibration motor in this phone. And it's such See, a niche. Isn't that crazy whenever a person provides criticism and then the company improves the product because of the criticism? That's crazy. Like it, it was because like, yeah, because like, I mean, it, it's just you're, you're looking at it from a complete wrong direction. And like that's a Razer W. It absolutely is. I have to say that like that's the way that it's that's the way it should be. And like I've had developers even say like, hey, listen, we took this feedback into consideration and we changed it and we made it better. Because like, isn't that what you should do? Like, for example, whenever we had like, you know, Starforge happened, and like at the beginning, uh, people were unhappy with like what the value proposition from Starforge was because they said, well, this isn't uh, this is uh, like the, the, the processor was like really shitty in it, basically. Right. And like we had a reason for it, but it doesn't really matter like what our reason is. Right. Uh, because if the customer doesn't perceive value, then you have a problem. Like, that's it. That's the end of the conversation. And so we had a we had a meeting that night with like everybody. And then we changed it and we improved the product. There it is. That's that's how things are supposed to work. That's how you should deal with people giving you bad reviews when you're selling a product. Like, don't take it personally. They're comp they're criticizing the product, not you. It's hard to do. Thing, but I sure enough, I try it and it's way better. And that's to me what that's a big part of what reviews are all about. Yeah, that honest feedback turned into actually action for the company to make it better. So people who bought the first one knew what they were getting into, and people who bought the second one actually benefited from that. So that's number one. Honesty, obviously, is super important. But the it second is. thing is these reviews are also definitely for the people that are watching them and consuming them. So you've probably been in the situation when you're, you're about to buy something and you just want to double check. So you, you hop on YouTube, you search it up, watch a couple of videos about the product just to make sure you're not missing anything. Yeah. And then you either decide. I mean, because you've got to keep in mind, like, you know, he's reviewing stuff. This is a car, man. I mean, this is like a phone is like a thousand dollars. That's a lot of fucking money. Yeah, you're going to want to do your research and you're going to want to know that you're getting the right information. Moment or later that day, like, Absolutely. okay, yeah, I'm definitely going to buy it. We've all been there. I, that's the reason. That's exactly how this YouTube channel started. Like my first yeah. ever tech video was reviewing a laptop, but specifically I, I bought the laptop with my allowance money in high school and I found yep. a Windows Media Center remote in the PCI slot that wasn't in any of the other reviews. So the first thing I decided to do was talk through it in a video so that anyone else who bought the yep. laptop after me would know about it. So you're thinking about buying the thing, you watch a couple reviews of the thing, you learn everything you need to know, boom, success. But here's there where it is. gets a little bit interesting. I do have a bit of an extra dimension on my hands with these videos because I know that there's no way that every single person watching a review of every single product is one of those people who was considering buying it. I get that comment actually in person all the time. I, you know, I watch the reviews even though I'm not buying any of this stuff. 
So I know that a lot of people, in fact, most people watching these videos are actually just here to watch an interesting, informative, good video. I think like for me, I'm, I'm one of these people, right? I don't really buy a lot of stuff. The reason why I like doing it and I like watching videos like this is because it keeps me up to date with like what tech is. I just want to know, like, I, I want to see, like, okay, what's the new stuff that people have out now? Like, how, how, you know, check in every couple of years. Like, so how close are we to Sword Art Online right now? Okay, so we're still about 20 years off. Right. Okay. Yeah, I'll be back in two years. So, yeah, I, I think that's the reason. Absolutely. In general. And, 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 entertain and also, for example, like, you know, like that Apple Vision Pro? Like, I'm probably not going to buy one of those because it's just not really the kind of thing that I, I do. But I, I watched like reviews and I looked into it because it was really popular in like, you know, in the public space. And I wanted to know like what the product was and why people were talking about it. Yeah. Like. <laughs> video. And so the way that I satisfy those things is much more subjective, I think. Yeah. Like everyone has a different way they do it. Everyone has a different target demographic. Mm hmm but that's a little bit of a new dimension. So then I think if we go back to the original question, so can, uh, can a video be, can a video kill a company? I'll use the uh, Humane and Fisker examples specifically. The Fisker Ocean was a terrible car. It is a terrible there car. Is. I've reviewed about 40, 50 different cars in the past few years, made videos about many of them. Mm -hmm. This is the first one where I genuinely couldn't wait is to be out? done driving it. Like, it just had tons of problems, bugs, missing features, safety issues. Yeah, those are like, supposed to probably go back in. It's just bad, right? So I review the thing. I give people what I feel is a fair assessment that also doubles as a yeah. warning not to buy this bad car. Um, so hopefully it's entertaining and informative to the majority of people who weren't yeah. thinking about buying the car, but also that it is as honest as And possible. also, like, here's another thing. It's like I've been in the market for a car. So, like, whenever I see things that can go wrong with another car, it gives me a different frame of reference to, to look at for things that could go wrong with prospective cars that I'm going to buy. Because it's like a new, uh, a new like, foundation of thinking. ...with the people who are. And maybe a week or two later, the company's stock price is plummeting to an all-time mm -hmm. low, and they appear to be, like, filing for bankruptcy. Cue the internet going nuts which I, gu I guess i get it like obviously it makes a nice headline like oh this this review came out yeah. and it killed this company this review bankrupted all of fisker maybe like there was a whole morning brew thread on how fisker handled this video so poorly that they're now going to go bankrupt because of it also there were there were whole stock investment themed channels saying this was like a paid promoted attack against the fisker stock price like it got pretty crazy i think that's crazy that people say that like i i feel like you shouldn't be able to say that that that's that's nuts like to say that somebody was paid off to do that i mean it's basically defamation right how's it not yeah without proof yeah you're calling somebody a scam artist and like a fraud I, 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 that, that's really, really bad. You advocate for free speech? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I'm a huge free speech advocate. Yeah, defamation and slander aren't part of free speech. Yeah, so that, that's kind of like the, that's, that's the way it works. And so if you want to, if you want to look it up, you'll, you'll learn more about it. And like, you know, there's libel too, which is like where it's written. And so like, yeah, just read, read a little bit about it and you'll understand it. And so, uh, anyway, this kind of stuff that happens, I, I feel like, did the review kill the company? I think it probably didn't. I think what probably killed the company is that, what do you think the odds are that the only car that that company made that was bad was the one that they sent to him? I bet a bunch of other people sent back their cars. I bet they said to their friends that they were bad. It's Because it's like, like only 4 million people watched his review. There's 7 billion people on the planet. So most people didn't see this review whenever they went to buy the product. Maybe some did, maybe some didn't. Crazy. But did one review kill the entire company? And I also, was... if a review kills the company and the review was accurate, then the company deserved to die. 
say to zoom out a bit, I would really, I think it's important to zoom out a bit, actually. First of all, I was not the only one to review the car, not even close. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, the stock price did drop after my video, but the stock was in free fall for many, many months before my video, too. And if you zoom out on YouTube or in the car review space in general, I was far from the only person saying these things about the car for all of these months. Many the other worst car ever. What now? Reviewers had been Jesus. having a plethora of issues, even stuff that I didn't have with this thing. I actually, yep. I feel like that might be the easiest way to tell if a review is honest or not. Like, we're, we're, we're all reviewing the same product basically if, you, if we all have the same thing so we're all going to find a lot of the same things we're all yeah. eventually going to have like a you're going to have like bugs and stuff like that like for example like shipping problems like you order something maybe one person gets a shipping problem but like so this is the way that shipping works is that you cannot reduce shipping damage down to zero but if you can go from one in a hundred shipping damage to one in a thousand that is a massive improvement and that saves you a ton of money on RMA and like any sort of like refunds, anything else, right? So you want to do that as much as possible. But if you're getting a lot of people that are all buying a product and they're all having shipping problems, then you have a problem with the way that you're shipping. But if only one person has a problem, then it's not a big deal. The same upsides downsides if there are issues they may eventually surface so yep. yeah, they're 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 probably gonna agree with each other a yeah, bunch of, of honest reviews they'll all say a lot of the same stuff oh and also yeah the in the u.s the stock price th there's this thing where if uh if a stock what is it if it's below a, a dollar, a dollar it's taken for off the exchange however many days in a row then they'll get 90, a warning i think that they may be delisted for, and they have six months to get the stock price back up over six? a dollar and fisker had just phase went through this received that notice right around the same time that my I think right before my video came out actually and if you're an investor you're looking at that that's the type of stuff that really tanks the stock price if you're asking me and if you're asking me personally I I literally don't care what the stock price is of any company of any product I review I it's not just indicative of the quality of the <laughs> and product. so if I'm if I'm talking about a product that will yeah. never have anything to do with what I say about the product and I, I hope that's not true about other people either. I shouldn't even have to say this. I, I'm well, not... it, it, it becomes true. Because if people are giving reviews that are wrong, mean-spirited, scams, or fraudulent, eventually people will catch on to that and stop watching them. Because a review is in service of the customer. And consumers consume reviews, viewers consume reviews, in order to be educated about the product. So if people are watching a review and the review does not adequately educate them about the product accurately, then that person who's doing the reviews will eventually fall out of favor. Here's a great example. Video game journalism websites. Every game is an eight. No, it, no, they're not. No, everybody knows they're not. So like whenever you continuously deliver reviews that are, uh, you know, fluff pieces or you know, intentionally disregard or over-focus on things like with Hogwarts Legacy or with uh, Final Fantasy 16, eventually those places lose their credibility. And I, I just, I don't want to go too far off into this, but like, I just want to show you real quick, okay? Just so you guys can really see how extreme this trend really is. Because like, it's actually insane. IGN, and then we're going to go Kotaku, Rock... Paper, shotgun, PC gamer. Uh, po let's do Polygon. Uh, we're going to look at uh, worldwide trends, and we're going to look at it over the past uh, 2004 to present. That is the consequences of your actions. Now, obviously, market demands and market uh, expectations have changed a lot. Uh, they've tremendously changed. But these companies are dying because their reviews are not considered seriously. And they're not considered as authentic or accurate. Invested in any companies that I cover. It's just a matter of trying to make an informative, educational, and honest video review. Yeah. That's my goal. My only goal is to do that. And I don't yeah, have and any... And this is what happened, because like, he's like one of the biggest tech reviewers, right? And so because of that, any time that people are unhappy about the way that a product is reviewed, 
pretty much all of the tech reviewers are going to say the same thing because they're reviewing the same tech. But he's going to be the one that gets criticized because his videos are the biggest. Duty to any of the companies whose products I cover, it is only to the people watching the videos. So now, okay, fast forward to, you know, pretty recently, the Humane AI pin comes out. Mm -hmm. A lot of the same stuff, right? Like this pin has a lot of missing promises. The, you know, the things it does, it doesn't actually do super well. The battery life is bad. It overheats. Yeah. The laser projector is kind of bad. Like the list just goes does on Does it and explode? On. I try to be as fair as possible and as informative as possible. Yeah. But I'm also absolutely not about to sugarcoat or leave anything out to protect any company's $700 device with a monthly subscription. Not into that. That is insane. And also like his job is to protect his audience, not the company. The company can protect itself by creating a good product. But yet, even still, there are some threads blowing up saying, it's this guy was such a dumbass. What I did to this poor company. And, you know, maybe you could argue sense. Do no harm. Like, I love how this guy thinks that giving a negative review is doing harm. Is he lying? This is the biggest channel that covered it. Maybe there's some extra. Yeah, that's the reason. There. But again, I would say. I think out. that a lot of people don't like the idea that YouTubers have so much power in an industry and it makes them nervous or mad because they don't like they think that it's like an imbalance. They're like, well, he shouldn't have that power. What what people don't understand is that he doesn't have the power. The audience has the power and the audience puts their faith in him to use that power for a good measure. And because he continues using it in that good measured way the audience continues following him. This is a person who fundamentally misunderstands. It's like I was saying like about like Final Fantasy 14 primals, right? It's like it's all the people praying to like Freet or fucking the Phoenix uh, to make it exist. Like that's it. And so I, I, I think people fundamentally misunderstand how power structures work for content creators because content creators are fundamentally accountable to their audience and their audience is the bottom line. It's not him that's doing it. It's the audience that empowers him to do it. It's the same with me, for example. Now, I just zoom out again. I am not, I was not the first actually even to cover the humane pin, but I'm also far from the only one to talk about yeah. it. And even a little inside baseball, when a product comes out that's this notable or this bad, uh, which isn't very often, a lot of reviewers, like that's, it's a very, it's stressful. You want to make sure you get everything right. A lot of us are literally... Well, yeah, and it's like you you don't want to because it's actually better. Like, I bet a lot of people don't want to give bad reviews because it could, it could damage their reputation if they were wrong. And, like, also it could make them less likely to give you stuff in the future. It could hurt you more. Yeah, exactly. Like, giving a good review to a bad product is less harmful than giving a bad review to a good product in terms of, like, business, right? And, like, of course that makes sense. So, yeah, logically, it would make sense that uh, content creators like him would not want to do that. It could damage if the public backs the product, too. Yeah, exactly. He's clearly not trying to misrepresent the product, though. Simply, it is what it is. Yeah, I know. Trading notes. I'm, like, trying to figure out, like, when mine died in two hours and overheated on my chest without doing anything, oh my God. I thought it was, like, an issue with mine. Yeah. And I was texting a couple others, and... Sure enough, they're having the same things happen to them. So we're all trying to be as as thorough as possible and making sure our reviews are truthful. And so that's how you get a bunch of truthful reviews. Now you could argue, and I think the, the guy on Twitter did, that uh, the packaging was too clickbaity. And I totally get that. But I also stand by our title and thumbnail. And well, if, if he thinks it's the worst product he's ever reviewed, then it is. That's all there is to it. I've had a lot of games change my life. Especially the end of the title. But keep in mind the dimension yeah. that that most of the people who, who see this in their feed and their subscription box have never heard of the Humane AI pin. And this will be yeah. the first time they hear about it. And they click on it, hopefully, and then they're delivered with a thoughtful, well-considered, balanced and honest and entertaining and informative video that happens to be a review. So look. I've reviewed a lot of bad products in my day. You might remember some of them. You might remember the Dyson headphones or the Red Hydrogen One or the Pixel Slate or the HTC U Ultra. The list goes on. But one thing has definitely been clear and consistent throughout all of this, which is anytime the company 
goes under, it, you don't get those bad reviews without the product being bad to begin with, yeah. obviously. I have a massive amount of respect and appreciation for- Yeah, it's also like, it's just crazy because like they're assuming that everybody that bought the product sees the review. There's a lot of people that bought the product and had the same experience probably and said, this is bad. Like I've had that happen. If you guys ever bought something and then you look up later on, as soon as it starts having problems and it's like, everybody's saying this here, I'll give you a great example, guys. You want to hear the big one? An Xbox 360. People and groups of people who are actually making new stuff like building products that's the hard part at the end of the day well wow, we... mine has this red thing on it what is this look it up oh there's a term for it uh-oh we get to get a whole bunch of new exciting things that might change the world and that's really exciting but my reviews technically are not for them yeah they're all for that customers. any honest review actually does is just accelerate whatever was already going that's on. right think of it that way okay thanks for watching catch you guys in the next one peace he's completely right i totally fucking support him absolutely he's 100 percent right some companies that make bad products deserve like there are financial there's a video right there give it some support i mean he doesn't need these fucking massive 18 million subscribers like he is he's by far the biggest tech review channel and so like he's gonna be the one that everybody complains about it's like whenever people complain about streamers and like they list xqc they're like oh streamers are bad and it's a video of xqc well yeah because he's one of the biggest streamers and so like is it really him that does everything bad no but he's just the one that everybody uses as a frame of reference because he's the most popular one and so people are talking about it or me yes or me or hassan uh or somebody that's like kai uh, jinxie now right and like people use like one person like that that's well known and then they base everything off of that so yeah